Hey Pisces, it's Suzanne here to do your second reading of the week. So this reading this week is going to be about how your person could actually see this connection. All right, so we're going to look at it on multiple levels here. This reading is going to move more quickly because it's less intuitive. All right. And I know some of you like that, some of you don't like that as much. So we're going to just keep variety. All right, so this first card represents what makes this person happy. This card, the second card, represent, represents what is factually possibly going on in this person's life right now. This third card here is what triggers this person possibly in this connection. And then finally, the fourth card represents what this person is hopeful about. Okay. All right. So first card is what makes this person happy. Wow. Well, we couldn't get a more perfect card, <laughs> um, Pisces, for this upcoming week. We have the clover. So what makes this person happy is what makes them feel lucky. So that could be you. They might feel lucky that they found you. They might feel lucky that you're in their life. They might feel lucky to even, you know, be able to think about you right now. Okay? So that's a beautiful energy. And of course, this clover card here is a number two. So... We're talking about two people, you and them. All right, so let's get some clarification on what makes this person feel lucky. This could also be serendipity. So let's see. Knight of Cups. I feel like this person is thinking about making a romantic offer. This almost feels like, for some of you, like this person screw, might have screwed it up on Valentine's Day. I feel like they're, whoops, I feel like they're going to fix it on St. Patrick's Day. This could be going on, you know, this weekend. What else? Queen of Pentacles. So whatever this person is getting ready to tell you or whatever they're getting ready to do in a romantic fashion here, you know, I feel like it's very authentic. Like there's no BS here. This person is being very authentic and doing something from the heart. And again, going back to it's this either this connection or something about you or something about this makes them feel very lucky. This might be, a, again, a serendipitous type of meeting. Like you might meet, you might accidentally come together. All right, and then we have the Seven of Swords, and it's so interesting. I've seen the Seven of Swords under what makes somebody happy in multiple, multiple readings this week, and it's always the last card. There's something to that. Um, you know, the Seven of Swords can be, you know, a little bit of a shady energy, or this person... Um, you know, they might be trying to manipulate a situation in order for everything to fall into place. And it's it's so it's so interesting that this comes up over the the Queen of Pentacles because the Queen of Pentacles is almost the opposite energy of Seven of Swords. Queen of Pentacles 
you know, doesn't, you know, doesn't BS anybody. You know, she doesn't feel the need to. She's authentic. So it could be that you have an earth sign that, you know, is wearing some type of mask that's going to be taken off. Like their authenticity, they're finally going to show you who they really are. The romantic feelings that they have. I almost feel like the Seven of Swords, and I haven't read it this way in the other readings, but that's what I'm getting for this one. I feel like this person is ready to take off a mask they've been wearing. All right, so let's see factually what's going on in this person's life. All right, so we have the house. So this is around their foundation, their stability. All right. So I'm using the Lenormand deck only to clarify for this row. So the first one, all right, so we have the compass. So that's interesting. So there's like a change of direction as far as their foundation or their stability. So this person, you know, might be getting ready to, to physically move, you know, move house. They might be moving towards you. They might be moving jobs. They might be changing jobs because this is around stability. And this, this compass means they're going in a different direction. This person might be going from having a job to, um, you know, being their own boss. What else? We have the magnifying glass. Look at all of these fours here. Okay. We have 44, 42, and number four. And that stands out to me because, you know, fours are about realistic thinking. So this isn't somebody that has their head in the clouds. This is somebody that is very focused in the real world. You know, they see, they feel lucky in some way. I feel, again, it's around this connection between the two of you. And I feel like once this is in line, once they take off their mask and they are who they really are, it's like they're, they're, the, the windows of opportunity open up around their stability. It's like now they can be who they really are. You know, and you know, this person might be, um, you know, they could be in a high level position in the corporate world and they're not feeling it anymore. You know, they want to uh, open a, an automotive shop or they want to open a pizzeria or do something that really fulfills them. And I feel like they want you along for the ride because that's what makes them happy, being authentic. One more. Wow. By the way, magnifying glass is about looking at something more closely. And I feel like this person is looking more deeply and more closely at who they really are, what they really want. You know, and this, um, this cross here, you know, it's like, it can, this can be a cross, you know, a crossroads. It can also be like, they're at a point where they either have faith in where they're already at and they take that path or they feel a pull towards destiny, which is the unknown, and they're taking that path. I feel like this is a call towards their destiny. All right, so over here we have what triggers this person. Look at that. We have the scythe, which is like a hatchet. You know, this hatchet is like cutting away the wheat. So what triggers this person, even though, you know, it feels like this person is 
trying to become their more authentic self. In that process, they have to be able to cut away things that aren't serving them anymore. You know, and that could mean, you know, a big, beautiful house. You know, it could mean a lot of stuff. Because if this person, you know, going back to my example, if this person is in a high-ranking corporate position, you know, you know, makes a really good living financially, but they want to open a, an auto shop or a pizzeria or, you know, whatever it is they want to do, it feels like they would have to cut away quite a few things in order to be able to do that to make room for what's new that's coming in, which can include you. I feel like this is something that they want you on their journey while they're doing this. So it makes sense that they would need to take off their corporate mask in order to be able to move this forward. All right, so let's see. Four of Cups. Yeah, I mean, the Four of Cups, this person has to leave these three empty cups behind so they can go towards their Ace of Cups, which is what they love. And I feel like the Ace of Cups in this reading has multiple meanings. I feel like you're involved in that and also um, something that calls to them as being who they authentically are. They have to cut away these three empty cups that aren't serving them any longer. One more here. Two of cups. So again, this is the row of what triggers them. All right, so there is this mutual connection between the two of you, right? Anytime the two of cups shows up, that's the case. So that could be triggering them a little bit right now because they need to take this Seven of Swords mask off and kind of make themselves vulnerable in this connection. It's like they know they have to do that before they can do this, before they can make this change in direction. And, you know, I don't know why that is. I don't know why they feel like they have to address this first. It might be because it's what makes them happiest, you know, and it's it can be the hardest thing in the world to make yourself vulnerable to another person and take off that mask. But that's what I feel like is triggering this person. They're afraid to do that, as many are. And then Six of Swords. I think they're worried as to, you know, if you hear you know, that they're giving up their their corporate facade, so to speak, their corporate mask, will you still want to ride away in the boat with them? Some of you will. Some of you may not. You know, if this person says, you know, I want to be a – they could say I want to walk dogs for a living. Will you still find them as appealing when they tell you that they want to give up their corporate job so they can walk dogs and have a kennel? You know, I feel like that's that's the essence of what they're what they're worried about, what is triggering them right now. They don't know. They don't know if that would be something that was appealing to you. But I feel like it would be only because I feel like they they know this is something that would appeal to you as well. And then finally over here, we have what they hope for. So we have the labyrinth. So it's like they have probably already hit some walls, some blocks along the way, but that hasn't stopped them. You know, just because you hit a brick wall you can turn around and go back in the other direction and find a new path. 
So there are many paths to get to where this person wants to be. And you're definitely part of it. But there's something very triggering about this connection right now for them, which I feel like is around vulnerability. Look, so we have the world, which is, you know, I feel like this labyrinth that this person has been going through, this maze that this person is going through to get to where they want to go, I feel like that cycle is is ending and they are hoping that it is. I feel like this person's been through a lot to get to where they want to go. Nine of Swords, they're hoping for the worry around this to go away. They're hoping to not have to think about you know, every little thing that can go wrong. Because that's what they've been doing up until this point. And then Page of Wands, they're hoping to just be able to focus on what's new. What they have passion for. You know, a lot of this feels like um, it's stuff that had to happen. It's stuff that they had to go through. And possibly it's stuff they have to address with you. But they're they're hoping that, that you're along for the ride, that this connection remains solid, and that you can both go towards what you're passionate about. And I feel like it's something that you guys are meant to do together. It's something that you both love, that you're both good at. All right, so finally I'm going to pull two message cards. All right, so this is my deck of Messages of Clarity by Sunny Forest Tarot. Um, and I'm going to, I want to pull the first card on the Seven of Swords. And this magnifying glass. All right, so the first card out here we have, all right, so this is under the row of what makes this person happy. All right, so when I'm driving, songs speak to me. So there might be a song between the two of you that you both know or you both love. Um, you know, I feel like this song comes up. Possibly this could be what is pushing this person to take off their mask and be authentic with you. Second card here for the magnifying glass. You are beautiful in my eyes. And this row is about factual. This person absolutely finds you very beautiful in their eyes. And I feel like, again, this is something, this person is moving towards something that I feel like the two of you are going to embark on together. And that's why it's so important that they address what's going on within this connection first before they make, I feel, some some big changes, some leaping into the unknown, moving towards a destined path. All right. All right, Pisces, that is what I have for you. Um, I hope it resonated for you. If not, you can always um, request a personal reading. I'm always here for you and you can reach out. You will get a response quickly. If you don't, for some reason, get a response quickly, um, please send another email. Uh, I definitely had a scenario last week where I missed it and I felt awful. So um, yeah, please uh, please reach out again if you don't get a, a fairly quick response because it's probably an error somehow or I missed it somehow. Sometimes I'll get, for some reason, a lot of reading requests will come in all at once and that's where things could get a little bit confusing sometimes. And I, I 
will see your email or read your email thinking that I responded to it. You know, it's just like text messages where you think you responded and you didn't. So it doesn't happen very often, but I just want to put it out there. All right, Pisces, that's what I have for you for this week. Um, I will talk to you next week if I don't hear from you otherwise. And I thank you very much. Have a great rest of your weekend. Bye-bye.